Hi friends, welcome to the daily current affairs session by NEO IAS. Today on 2nd January 2019, the topics that we are going to discuss are Framework Convention on Tobacco Control, UNESCO, Cinereus Vulture and other rare vulture species, then Taubal River, then Spiritual Department, then One District, One Product Scheme and our daily sessions of map aided program and PQRS that is previous question revision series. Moving on to our first topic that is framework convention on tobacco control FCTC. Why we are discussing this because the Thailand and Saudi Arabia they will join a growing club of nations that is they are introducing the plain packaging of tobacco products. So this plain packaging of tobacco products was first introduced by Australia and now Thailand and Saudi Arabia are also going to join into this group. So let's see more details. They are the first in the Asian and Arabian regions respectively to uh, adapt themselves to, to this tobacco consumption program. In December 2012, the Australia became the first country to introduce this plain packaging. So, it was first introduced by Australia and now these two nations are also joining into this. And this was also being implemented in France and United Kingdom both in 2016 and Norway and Ireland both in 2017 and New Zealand and Hungary both 2018 and it will be implement, implemented in Uruguay in 2019 and Slovenia in 2020. So what is this plain packaging actually? So it uh, standardizes the appearance of tobacco products. As the name suggests this plain packaging in this plain packaging of tobacco products only the brand and the product names are displayed in simple standard color and font style. The main aim is to reduce the attractiveness of the tobacco products. That it prohibits the use of logos, colors, brand images or promotional information in this package. Hence, with no scope for using this packaging to advertise the to promote the conception of tobacco products. That was the actual aim of this plain package. Let's see the status in India. In India, already by 2016, we have already increased the size of the graphic pictorial warning by 85% on the tobacco products, that both front area as well as the back area. And uh, according to the study conducted by the Global Adult Tobacco Survey 2016-17, it has been noted that the percentage of users in India who thought of quitting because of such warning labels, it has increased sharply to 62 percentage regarding cigarettes and 54 percentage in BD and 6, 46 percentage in smokeless tobacco users according to this study. And another interesting fact is that the tobacco use among those aged between 15 to 24 years have showed a 6 percentage point reduction. And the number of persons who are using this tobacco has dropped by 8 million. That is the current status in India. Let's see about the WHO Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. It is the first international treaty negotiated under the auspices of WHO and it was adopted by the World Health Assembly on 21st May 2003 and it entered into force on 27 February 2005. The WHO FCTZ, it was developed in response to this globalization of the tobacco epidemic. The treaty which is now Close to for signature, it has got 168 signatories 
it also includes the European Union. So, hence we can say that it is one of the most widely embraced treaties in the United Nations history. And the COP, that is the Conference of the Parties, is the governing body of the WHO FCTC. And it comprises of all parties to the convention. Our next topic is UNESCO. Why this came in news? Because the United Nations and Israel, they officially quit from UNESCO. So, about the news. What is the reason? The anti-Israel bias of the uh, UNESCO or anti-Israel bias is the reason for exit of these two nations from UNESCO. And in the case of US, it is not the first time that United States has withdrawn from the UNESCO. Earlier in 1984, it has withdrawn from UNESCO and later it rejoined the UNESCO in 2003 under the presidentship of George W. Bush. So, in the case of US, it is not the first time that is, it is moving away from UNESCO. Let us see what is the impact of this withdrawal. This impact is few in terms of tangible financial and legal impact as the UN has had its UNESCO voting rights. And uh, as I said earlier, it moved away and it came back in 2030 and it has got its own voting rights but it was suspended in 2030 after it failed to pay the dues. And the withdrawal may have and a knock effect on the countries like UK, Japan and Brazil. So, the three other nations which for differing some other reason they are they have also not paid the UNESCO dues. Then, America's annual contribution to this UNESCO budget is 22 percentage that is roughly 80 million. The UNESCO treaty is signed, ratified and incorporated into domestic US law will not be impacted by the withdrawal. So, please note there will not be any change regarding the UNESCO treaties which is already signed, ratified and incorporated into domestic US law. So, this law includes or this includes the important laws that is 1973 treaty on illicit trafficking of cultural artifacts and the 1972 World Heritage Convention pertaining to World Heritage Sites. What is the advantage? That is, as a signatory to the World Heritage Convention, the US can continue to nominate one site. So, it can nominate one site per year for ratification as a World Heritage Site. Let us see about UNESCO. As we all know, UNESCO is the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. So, it seeks to build peace through international cooperation in education, science and culture. In education, science and culture. UNESCO's founding vision was born in response to world war that was marked by ras racist and anti-Semitic violence. Then the UNESCO's programs contribute to the achievement of the sustainable development goals defined in Agenda 2030 and adopted by the UN General Assembly in 2050. And its headquarters is in Paris. Our next topic is regarding this seigneurious vulture and other rare vulture species. Why this came in news? Because the seigneurious vulture is a type of vulture and it was for the first time it was spotted in Jargon in Hazirabad along with three other rare vulture species. The other rare vulture species are the Himalayan griffon. Then white rubbed vulture and the long built vulture. So, the seigneurious type of vulture it was uh, noted for this or it was spotted for the first time in Jargon along with these three species. 
Let's see some points regarding the Cinereus vulture. It is one of the heaviest and largest raptors in the world. It is dark brown and broad winged with uh, a slightly wedge shaped tail. So you can see from the diagram. The bald head and neck are a bluish grey in colour and it was also known as moor vulture in some countries. And it is mainly found in Europe migrating to warmer areas of Asia and it also migrates to India during the winter season. And this vulture species they are threatened by poisoning, habitat destruction and reduction of food supply. So these are some of the reasons for threatening of this species and it was um, included in the near threatened status by the IUCN red list. Moving on, our next topic is Taubel River. Why this came in use? Because uh, the continuous excavation of sand and stones from this Taubel River, it has led to immense negative impact on the river. Let's see, this Taubel River, it is in Manipur. So, here you can locate the Taubel River and uh, this um, Mapithal Dam, it is constructed over this Taubel River. And you can also see some other river systems in Manipur. They are uh, Infal River, Iral River, then Taubel River, Kuga River and Toita River. All these rivers are seen in Manipur. Here you can see the Taubel River. That's all regarding the topic. Then our next topic is uh, current affairs capsule. In that I will discuss two topics. So the first topic is spiritual department. So the Congress led Madhya Pradesh government it is going to create an Adhyatmic Vipar that is the spiritual department by merging the several already existing departments. So the Anand Vipar that is uh, the Department of Happiness, it was set up previously by the BJP government and it was first in the country and now this Anand Vibhag will be also going to incorporate into this new department. So Adhyatni Vibhag, it is a spiritual department, it was created by the Congress-led Madhya Pradesh government. Then our next capsule topic that is one district, one product scheme. This one district, one product scheme, it was initiated by the government of Uttar Pradesh. Its actual aim is to enhance the skills of local people and increase in the reach of the indigenous trades, crafts and other products from the small towns into the main districts. So, this one district, one product scheme, it is initiated by the government of Uttar Pradesh. Next is our map aided program. In that, we will be dealing with Matala project. Why this came in news? Because three rounds of official negotiations were completed on a likely joint venture between the Airport Authority of India and the Airport and Aviation Services in Sri Lanka. So, what is the purpose? The purpose is to run the laws making Matala Airport. So, let us see the location of Matala Airport. It is located in the southernmost part of Sri Lanka. So, this Matala Rajpaksha International Airport it is located near the strategically significant Hambantonda port in Sri Lanka. So, the 20 million facility, uh, this port contains 20 million facility and it is located 241 kilometers southeast of Colombo and it is dubbed the world's emptiest airport. Please note, it is dubbed as the world's emptiest airport. Why? Due to lack of flights. This Matala airport was named after the former president Mahinda Rajpaksha. And this project was funded through the high interest of Chinese commercial loans. And this uh, airport was officially opened in March 2013. The only international flight operating from uh, there was, it was halted in May 
due to recurrent losses and flight safety issues. And now the government is inviting investors to turn the airport into a profit sharing joint venture. Unfortunately, no proposals were received to operate and manage this Matala airport. So our next question is PQRS, that is previous question revision status. In that, we will be dealing with one question from environment. So the question is, with reference to dugong, a mammal found in India, which of the following statement is or are correct? And the options are, it is a herbivorous marine animal. Then second one, it is found along the entire coast of India. Then the third point, it is given legal protection under Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. So select the correct answer using the code given here. And the options given are A, 1 and 2, B, 2 only, C, 1 and 3, and B, 3 only. So the question is regarding the uh, species that is the dugong. So, this dugong is also called as sea cow. It is the only existing species of herbivorous mammal that lives exclusively in the sea, including in India. So, please note, it is the only existing species of herbivorous mammal that lives in sea. And uh, these dugongs are usually uh, seen in the protected areas of uh, Gulf of Manar, Park Bay, then Gulf of Kutch region and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The main cause of population uh, decline is the anthropogenic reasons and also including the fishing related uh, fatalities because sometimes they go trapped in the fishing nets. And habitat degradation and hunting. Usually these uh, sea co they eat sea grass and sometimes due to environmental pollution there is a sudden depletion in this grass, uh, sea grass rate and that also leads to its depletion. And this dugong has been hunted for thousands of years for its meat and oil. Then it is included in the IUCN conservation status as vulnerable species. So let us see the options. It is a herbivorous marine mammal. That is correct. It is a herbivorous marine animal. So, option 1 is correct. It is found along the entire coast of India. It is a general statement. It is uh, found in India but not along the entire coast of India. So, second statement is wrong. Then third statement, it is given a legal protection under Schedule 1 of the Wild Wildlife Protection Act 1972. It is also correct. So, option 1 and option 3 are correct. So, and this is the diagram of sea cow. And so, our answer is 1 and 3. That is C. C, 1 and 3. That is all regarding today's session. And thank you for 